Hey everyone, I am Lamont Gilchrist. Uh, www.lgfitnessmessiah.com is my website. Um, Lamont Gilchrist Natty on YouTube. Uh, I get, it, today is the 18th of May. Um, I got some competitors that will be competing in the Heartland Classics and some shows coming up. Good luck. Um, believe me or not, this is the first sip of the, um, my drink. So, I got a question. Someone sent me a question, and so I'm going to answer it and kind of give it until, uh, um, Detail, excuse me, a detailed insight about my breakdown. They were asking me about the importance of things and how I broke them down. Um, make no mistake, athletes are upset, exceptions to this rule, but not really exceptions to this rule because injury comes on play when you talk about overtraining, being in your sports and athletics. So what is my breakdown? What am I talking about? the importance of things 10 to 20 percent is working out and it can go up to 25 percent if you are an athlete and you have specific things to do so you have a trait or a skill set um, that you have to do and it can flip-flop just only then when you're an athlete and you are specifically training or you're a professional athlete then you're there 10, 12 hours, um, six hours a day. So that is your environment. That is the environment you live in. So your environment is, is also your workplace for athletes, even student athletes, collegiate athletes. So that's the only time that my real difference about the importance of things. Uh, so 10 to 20% is the importance of working out. Let me explain this. No matter what you do from a workout aspect, whether it's classes, aerobics, uh, Zumba, lifting weights, um, no matter whatever it is that you're doing from an exercising aspect, other than that being your environment that you live in, you will not change the dynamics from an aesthetic from a um, competitive and from an overall health aspect of your body. You can't do it. It just can't be done. Um, and I hate to use the word can't, but it doesn't happen. Um, you can't, there's a, there's a thing that goes around on the internet and the post that says you can't exercise your way out of a bad diet. The only people that can do that, 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 that lives in the environment that they're exercising in, powerlifters, bodybuilders, wrestlers, athletes, because you are in that environment all the time, so your body has to adapt to that environment. Anyone else that is not going that hard in that environment that you have not convinced your body that it has to do this because this is what it is, this is who you are, you will not change the dynamics of the way that you look. Wrestlers look like wrestlers, linemen look like linemen, running backs look like running backs, receivers look like receivers, they come in all shapes, sizes, everything, because they live in those environments. And so that's why they look, dancers look like dancers. Um, they live in those environments. For the rest of the 97, 95% of the people on the planet that are not athletes to that caliber, you can't do that with exercising. So that's why the breakdown is 10 to 20%. That's it. That's how much you got to affect your body with your exercising and your lifting and everything else like that. So then I always pose a question and I put this to my clients. Why put 100% into 10 and 20%, which that means you have to have your breathing down, your reps down, uh, your biomechanics down, um, 
pushing yourself, know exactly what you're trying to get out of it. So it's hard to even put 100% into that 10 to 20%. And then the bigger part of it, which most people don't understand, 20%, I mean 30% to 40% of it is rest. How do you recover? How do you rest? Rest also includes stretching, um, massage, um, anything that you're doing to help your body recover. Supplementation is part of that rest. Um, anything that you're doing to help your body with the recovery. How well is your recovery system? If you're pushing yourself as hard as you can and you have a terrible recovery system, guess what happens? You get injured. That's what happened. You burn out. That's why athletes burn out. That's why athletes get injured. Um, the nature of the sport may injure you in itself, but for sure, if you have a terrible recovery system, you will be burning on both ends of the wick, and the wick will be getting short real quick, and you will start having chronic things happen. I know from experience, because I was a chronic overtrainer, not enough for us, didn't understand it, tried to hold, get big, in the off season, overtrained in college, overtrained in sports that I did, because I just pushed myself all the time. Um, and then 50% of everything, even in an athlete, for the most part, is going to be your nutrition, your macro and your micronutrition. Your macro and your micronutrition. So if I go macro and micro, then I go the supplementation, which is a rest kind of thing. I kind of put that all together. So the resting and the supplementation, we are looking at 90 to 80% of your efficiency is all outside of whatever it is that you're doing. I know people don't like to hear that. I know it is a bummer. It's, it's a whatever, but... To me, I, I'm always trying to be positive about uh, things. It is, it's, it, it tells you that with patience and with time and with proper structure of what it is that you're doing from a nutritional aspect, you can be somewhat healthy without killing yourself in the gym, without ever even going inside of the gym, just walking, walking your dogs, gardening, cutting your grass, um, doing things that doesn't require you even lifting one weight. I'm a, I, I am a world-class trainer athlete, and I will be the first to admit it. Everyone do not have to lift weights to get in shape. Now, if you want to hold on to lean muscle, if you want to do other things and stuff like that, yeah, then you have to do some kind of resistance training. It doesn't necessarily have to be weight. But to be in halfway decent physiological shape, heart, everything pretty good, blood pressure, a good quality of life, you don't have to lift weight. I don't force this upon no one. My, my clients, past and present, people get, I do not train everybody. If someone comes to me with a delusional thought process about what it is that they're trying to do, and I don't see any signs that could get me there, especially with that person, I will tap out and say, uh, I'll give them some information, but I can't help you because I don't train myths. I don't train delusion. I don't train things that I don't think I can actually be part of that success. It is pointless for me. I don't like to train misery. There's no amount of money on the planet that can make me change something that can't be into something that can be. And I don't believe in chasing mythical dreams or goals or things of that particular nature. What I do offer them is a complete scientific understanding of what I think. And let me get to this point. People that start off younger will always be better. Don't get me wrong, you need genetics and other parts and stuff like that. So if you started off doing this younger, or you had some activity when you were younger and stuff like that, and then now you took some time off and then you come back, it is a little bit easier to make that transition, especially if you're an athlete because of muscle memory and everything else like that. 
you probably have some kind of testament for it too. But if you come later in the game, you can't expect to look like Dexter Jackson on stage with drugs or anything else like that. That is rare. Maybe people with the freakiest genetics, maybe 2% of the people on the planet can do that. And then my other big pet peeve is why give malnourished, fake natural people, fake models, fitness people, fake YouTube, Facebook posters, um, women who are just shriveled up all your praise um, when it says nothing for their physical condition. It says absolutely nothing about their shape, their health, or anything else like that. We're looking at a shell. I know a shell is very important for our eyes. That's the first thing that we think that we see is, is the physical aspect of it. But if you look close, you can, look, you can tell when people are using drugs, when people are sick, or when people are malnourished, or when people aren't healthy. Health should be the number one um, thing that's being promoted here, especially in the United States where the obesity rate is out of control. Um, so start giving more praise to health, to things that really matter than these physical things. Because half of y'all, and I'm going to keep it real, half of y'all that I know, when y'all was 20, y'all was halfway, whatever, but at 40, y'all hiding behind people in pictures. Y'all just face shots and stuff like that. There's a reason why you're doing that stuff. Because you understand how hard it is to, once you break that youthfulness and you're not concentrating on health, because that health aspect of growing until you're in your late 20s is still very prevalent. And so you still have so much of a youthful body. Just like women, though. You know about the freshman 15 when you go to college. If you already have a freshman 15 when you're in high school, then it's going to be... Uh, the freshman 30 or 40 when you get to college. I'm not trying to be rude or mean, but let's just be real about health and, and the real aspect of things and why you hiding behind people in pictures and doing odd turns and stuff like that. Not saying anything that you have to be ashamed about your physical appearance, but you are ashamed about your physical appearance because if not, you would, you would just be how you are in pictures and everything else. So it does bother you, even though you try to act like it doesn't bother you. So don't try to twist something and make something that is not healthy into something that's healthy with all these posts with fat booties and all these other things that are not actually healthy. Um, don't make it a delusional healthy. Now you can have a nice voluptuous shape and be healthy, but health should always be the first thing when we're looking at the vessel, the temple all the time and judging the temple. The temple can send you missed signals. You know, performance, health, quality of health. Um, those are the things that I value as a trainer, that I value in my professional, that I push. That's why I do it natural. That's why I push those things. I push those things upon my client. And they thank me for it later. They come saying, oh, I want to look like this. I want to get in shape for this trip and everything. I push help on them. I make them. I force feed them help on the journey to whatever it is that they're trying to look from an aesthetic or a physical nature because I understand the value of health. Because I understand that it is a gift from the Most High, your Creator, um, that it goes hand in hand with mental and physical and spiritual enlightenment and health. So I understand those aspects. So that's my breakdown. Don't want to ramble on. 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 50. Unless you're an athlete, then you have a different breakdown. Um, if you're one of my clients, uh, you already know, and then I'm going to get some other people involved. I send videos out. And most of the time it's edited. I send training videos out. But I'm about to start sending because I record my training videos. My uncle who has diabetes, uh, some of my clients uh, where we talk, we're interacting, and it's some round. And then we don't get too out uh, because I don't really curse that much. Not you know, that it means anything and I don't we don't really but we talk you know we go in we talk about stuff you know we push you might hear me yell we talk about form we talk about you know sometimes my clients know sometimes I, I go in these little rants about when they're doing stuff that we should already know how to do why do we have to go backwards with our form and testing them? 
getting under the bar, putting your hand on the bar, and we'll go on and they feel like I'm chewing them off. But those are things that's going to keep you safe. Um, I, I do have, uh, I will be inviting people into this um, video uh, um, day by day dialogue of these things that I do so that you can actually hear and that you can actually get a recap of what it is that I do from a training aspect and talking to my clients and stuff like that. If you are fortunate enough to be one of the people that I invite to that, to uh, follow that journey and to see that, um, welcome aboard. Um, once again, forgive me if you're seeing like I'm going off sometimes on the videos and stuff like that. Or if you're seeing like I'm over talking all the time on the videos. I know when y'all see them on Facebook, they're always smiling and it, it's like any other commercial almost type videos or I have music in the background. But in these videos, you actually hear me speak, you hear the reps, you hear the weight. You hear the sounds of the gym, you hear the change, the changing of the weights, you hear uh, what we talk about, what we discuss in between um, uh, each lift or how we approach um, each exercise as we transfer into different body parts and into different exercises, which I think is very, it, it, which is super valuable. Um, I even go over and look over uh, and critique some of the things, some of the forms later on in the video, and it's uh, super valuable uh, for those things. So uh, if you get invited to go on that journey and see those videos, uh, welcome aboard. Thanks.